Thank you. We are blessed to be in the house of God yet again for another opportunity to worship and magnify our Heavenly Father who has done amazing and great things for us all to be partakers and benefactors of on this particular day. Um, first off, let me just say to you, um, happy Thanksgiving to you. Hopefully you had a wonderful experience and expression of time with friends, family, those that you love and some that you don't care about, but you had a good time to share with them during this holiday. This morning, I'm going to need your, and if you can close those doors, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to um, need your cognitive thinking this morning. So I am going to teach something that's a little different than I would on a Sunday morning, but I need your brain to follow. If you get lost, I cannot come back and pick you up. But I need you. I'm not a tour guide that's going to come back and pick you up. You're just going to have to catch it this morning. I 845 caught it, and if you catch it, it'll help you on this particular piece. I want to talk from just a, a subject title. Our series has been entitled about saturation, and I want to talk about we need the Holy Spirit, but I want to subtitle that when doves cry. I know some of you are thinking about Prince right now, but that is not what I am referencing to a degree not. But I want you to use your Bible today and I want you to write some notes down because it's going to be very helpful for our time of learning today. And I think that it will radically change how you view Holy Spirit in your life and how you communicate to God. And my prayer is that I can communicate it the way that I did in the first service. Uh, Genesis chapter number one. It says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The word that is so important for this is the word hovering. It is translated hovering but its original root of it so that we could understand it we use the word hovering but it's the word brooding which is so important because this is giving us for the very first time God manifesting a part of his Trinitarian being on the scene so in the Old Testament, God reveals to us Jesus in the new, Abraham. is about to sacrifice his son, and right when he's about to do it, he hears a voice from heaven that says, don't do it. I now know I can trust you. And then there's a ram that's coming up on the side of the mountain that has been there since the foundation of the world. God given us a type and shadow of Jesus. The Holy Spirit in this particular text we find is brooding over the face of the waters. There is formlessness. There is water. And the Spirit of God is brooding over the waters. And brooding is interesting because it is the terminology that you would use of a mother bird or a dove brooding over her eggs to bring forth life. The Holy Spirit sat on top of the water until the water began to shape itself and the earth began to take its form by the Spirit just brooding over it, which is suggestive to us that there are a lot of things that could be locked up on the inside but will not come out until the Spirit broods over it. 
when the Spirit of God broods and hovers over your life, it forces things that were in you to come out of you, things that you did not know were there. So I want you to add to your prayer life, Spirit of God, just sit on my life so that I can produce what's on the inside of me, even though it was empty, even though it was formless, even though it was dark. When the Spirit of God begins to sit upon it, stuff begin to happen, stuff begin to change, stuff begin to manifest that was not manifesting and God did not create on first by saying a word he created on first by sending his spirit and his spirit sits on top of the waters and as he sits as he begins to rest on it and as he begins to brood it begins to produce life it is interesting that God is giving us a glimpse of what this gift is to be before we even fully know what it is it is a picture of of a dove. Genesis chapter number one gives us this interesting picture of a dove and, and we're kind of clueless on it because it just doesn't say the word dove but it uses the word brooding which is associated with doves and so what is God doing and all of a sudden we don't see him in Genesis chapter number two, we don't see him in Genesis chapter number three, we don't see him in Genesis chapter number four, we don't see him in Genesis chapter number five but it also gives us an inkling that God has always been proposed as the father, as a masculine individual which he is. God is neither spirit, God is a spirit. He's neither male or female, but we take on the characteristics of a male. He is our father. And when we talk about Jesus, he is a male. He is our elder brother. He takes on the characteristics of a brother. But when we talk about the spirit, it's given us this maternal distinctive about it, that it sits on top of things and it begins to produce things like a mother who gets a seed and then produces a child we first have our first opportunity to identify with a God who may have some maternal instincts. And then we start to realize that God gives us clues that he says, I am Jehovah Jireh, the many-breasted one. Wait a minute, what, what's going on? God is showing us something. There was a song that caught my attention because of its implications by Ariana Grande called What If God Was a Woman. I thought at first that was a dumb song, which I don't believe God is a woman, but it is a question. It is a song that is a question. What if God was a woman? I believe that God has maternal instincts that we, God, God gives us ideas about himself so that we can conceptualize who he is because outside of that we could not conceptualize who he is God does not get angry but so you and I can relate to how he feels he says I get angry God doesn't have emotion so if you and I do something wrong to God it doesn't make God sit in a corner and weep but just to help us identify with a God because our brain is only three pounds but God is infinite and he's trying to help us understand his infiniteness in our three pound brain which we only use 10% of it. So he gives us ideologies about himself and concepts about ourselves that help us understand who he is. And the spirit broods. But then this dove disappears. He's not in Genesis chapter number 6. He's not in Genesis chapter number 7. But then when God wipes the earth away with the flood, in Genesis chapter number 8, verse 8, turn there, Genesis 8, verse 7 and 8, Genesis 8, Genesis 8, Genesis 8, Genesis 8, verse 7. He says this. After 40 days, Noah opened up a window. He made the in the ark and sent out a raven. And it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find nowhere to perch because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand, took the dove, and brought it back to himself. He waited seven more days again, sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its break, in its beak, was a freshly plucked olive leaf. 
Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. Isn't it interesting that the first time the dove goes out, the dove has nowhere to land its feet because of the water, and it goes back. It is a typology of Jesus saying this, when I went to find a place to lay my head, I could not find one. Then the second time the dove comes back, he now comes back with an olive branch in his mouth. Very important. We'll pick it up later. We'll let it float and pick it up later. Number three, the olive, the bird, the dove, the third time comes, gets sent out, but doesn't return again. Isn't it amazing that Jesus died for three days, the bird goes out on the third day, doesn't return on the third day, and we don't see the bird again? Come on, class. I can't come back and pick you up. And so now here's what happens. When Noah sends out the raven, the raven is known as a bird that cannot be offered as a sacrifice. It is an evil bird. It is a sign of wickedness that wickedness can go out first and though it seems like it is prospering, it never returns. And the dove goes out. Secondly, it is the white dove. Why would God call himself or give himself the image of a dove? Because a dove is white and it symbolizes purity. But not only that, a dove's wings is so oily that it cannot get soiled. And no matter how dirty a place you put that dove in, it will always stay white because no matter how dirty it gets, its wings will clean itself. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. And so here we go with this dove. It's interesting that he sends out this dove, and this dove goes out and checks the water. It's amazing that the only way Noah knows about his future is that he's got to trust a dove. Could I suggest to you that the only way you know about your future is when you start trusting in the Holy Spirit? And there are times where you got to send the Spirit ahead of you because the spirit knows what you don't know and sees what you don't see and the spirit goes ahead and it looks and finds itself it tries to find dry ground and it comes back to Noah and tells Noah Noah there's no dry ground but then it goes back a second time and it comes back with an olive leaf in its mouth Hmm, I wonder why it came back with an olive leaf. Number one, it came back with a green olive leaf. And the reason why the word green is important was because when the dove came back with the branch, it let Noah know that when the branch is green, it was underwater. So Noah knew that there's still water because of the color of the branch that was brought to him. And not only that, it brought an olive branch because an olive branch is indestructible. Even though you cut it down, it still grows back again. And they who were on the ark would also know that the olive branch is also a symbol of fuel that was needed for the temple to have the anointing and the power. This is a very important piece that as long as you and I have things in our lives, it needs to have the spirit of God in it because the Spirit of God makes the difference in everything that we have. Noah was on the boat but the, the dove comes back with this olive branch and he gives it to Noah and Noah recognizes instantly he knows that this dove didn't just bring back anything. He brought back something with a greater meaning. He brought back one what fuels the temple is this branch. They burn it, and it creates the anointing of God. God may have been telling Noah that this boat is resting, but this boat means nothing without God's presence in it. Though it kept you safe in one season, without God's presence, it could become a barricade in the next season. And maybe God is highlighting to us the importance of the Spirit of God. That even though you cannot go, you can send the Spirit of God ahead of you and he can find out things that your eyes would never see, your ears would never know. And Noah uses this dove. It's interesting that he uses this dove out of all characteristics and animals that God could use he uses the dove and the dove is released three times and then on the third time the dove doesn't return and the interesting thing about a dove is that a dove could be released and a dove always knows how to find its way back home 
This is why when you're saved, you're saved. And even though you walk away from God, you go to the club, the dove knows how to adapt in any environment that it's in. The dove doesn't club with you, but it lays dormant on the inside of you and waits for the right moment. It waits for the right opportunity to take its shot and bring you back home because the dove knows where it's trying to lead you. And some of you have felt within yourself, man, I don't know what it is. I can tell you what it is. It's the spirit of God on the inside of you leading you back home. No matter how far you go, the dove always knows how to get back to what sent him. And here it is. No, it's just not just the dove. The dove is an ancient bird. It's a navigating bird. It knows how to find direction. And isn't it amazing that he references himself as a dove, as symbolism of the Holy Spirit, and as a dove is a bird that knows direction, and God tells his disciples, I'm not going to leave you helpless, I'm going to send you a comforter, and this comforter is going to lead you and guide you into all truth, and when you and I accept the Spirit of God in our lives, this comforter begins to lead us and direct us and order our steps and tell us where to go and tells us where not to go, because the dove is able to alert us even before we know. The dove is an amazing dove because the dove, a fact about a dove which is very interesting is that a dove whenever it sense war it begins to sing and the reason it begins to sing is to alert its other doves that there's an enemy approaching and the dove is very powerful because have you ever begin to sing and you know you cannot sing but you just start to sing a song that you heard it may not just be you singing it may be the spirit on the inside of you according to Romans 8 making groanings and utterances that you don't know of and letting you know there's danger impending and we're going to sing this song to summon all of our help to let them know that there is trouble on the horizon and there are times when you're singing and it's not about your voice it's not about your talent it's about you saying something to a God that understands and hears and so this this dove that he gives us it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing because the dove is, is one that has this, this unique power to introduce something to us. And Noah is imprisoned in the ark and must depend on an animal. And not just any animal. He must depend upon a dove. It's interesting that this dove is, is shown because... In Matthew's gospel and in Luke's gospel, in order for you to give an offering, you couldn't give a raven. If you were to give an offering, you had to give an offering according to your economics. And if you were poor, you did not give the high-end offering. You would give the offering of a dove. Isn't it amazing that even through Scripture, God is showing us that the Holy Spirit doesn't just identify with the upper class. It can relate to the lower class. It, it is not just a spirit that only wants to hang out with those who have it all together. It will find those who don't have enough and rest with that person and stay with that person and dwell with that person. And Noah is sitting there trusting this dove and on the third time the dove goes away, we don't see it come back. But then we see it come back in Matthew chapter number 3. When Jesus gets baptized, Matthew 3, 16. Not John 3, 16. Matthew 3, 16. Jesus gets baptized and he hears a voice coming from heaven and he sees a dove descending upon him. And the dove says unto him, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus never did one miracle, never healed anybody, never touched the blind. But all of a sudden, because he obeyed, the dove says to him, this is my son and whom I'm well pleased. When you get the spirit of God on the inside of you, you stop performing and you start becoming. You start understanding that God is not impressed by what I do. He's impressed by who I am. And the spirit of God knows how to adapt to our lives. And there are 
a lot of us that are praying for different things and maybe we need to add to our prayer spirit of God lead me spirit of God guide me spirit of God help me understand when I don't understand and there are a lot of times when the spirit is trying to let us know things but we don't appreciate the spirit because we think the spirit is a frisbee and we talk about catching the spirit well he's not a frisbee he's not a football it is something that we receive we receive the spirit of God and maybe our prayer should be Holy Spirit I need you to sit on my life until I start producing something I know you got a resume but maybe you need to send that resume before God and say Holy Spirit sit on this until it produces something you don't need new more goals you don't need any more resolutions you just need the Spirit of God to sit on your life where there's void where there's formlessness where there's darkness you need the Spirit of God to hover over that situation and produce life in that situation and here's some interesting things that we find that this dove is come number one interestingly about doves is that they have a capacity no matter how far they are to find their way back home and it doesn't matter how lost you are. It doesn't matter how bad you feel you've become. If you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you, it will find you and make you come back home. That's why those that are his can't be plucked out of his hand because the Spirit of God will navigate its way back home. It is like having a, a um, it's like having one of those things that are, uh, they fly in the air and they um, take pictures. What are those things called? A drone. And a drone is kind of like a dove. It's pretty powerful, you know. When you have a drone, you can fly it and it'll fly all in the atmosphere. It'll fly and take pictures of things that you don't see. It'll capture images that you don't know exist. But one day I had a serious conversation with a droneologist. I said to him, here's my concern. If my drone goes too far away, then I'll lose my drone. He said, oh no, that's not possible. I said, how in the world will I not lose my drone? He says, because the drone has on the inside of it a program that it relates back to the base. And once it starts to lose communication with the base, it will return back to sender. And the drone will never go too far outside of the reach of the base. And it doesn't matter how far you go. There's a spirit on the inside of you that will not let you go too far away from the base. And when you go too far, the spirit of God will return you back to the sender. And you know why you can't rest. You know why you can't get comfortable. Because this spirit is dormant on the inside of you. And Timothy is told, stir up this gift that's on the inside of you. Though it may be dormant, it's not dead. It is there trying to call you into deeper things. It is there trying to call you into deeper things. That is why it says, deep calleth unto deep. And the reason why most of us are at unrest is because the spirit is trying to get you and I to produce where there's darkness, where there's void, and where his face is looking upon the water. Because when he looks in the water, he doesn't see the troubling of the water. He sees the image of himself. And when he looks at you, he doesn't see the troubling of your soul. He sees the image of himself. And the only way that he can get that image out of you, it's like a mother hen, is that he applies his pressure on you. He applies his weight on you. And with the intent of not crushing you, but producing in you what is already locked up in you. Everything that the earth needed was already in it, but it had to be released out of it. Everything that is in you is already in you. It needs to be released out of you. And the Spirit of God hovered and brooded. And maybe he's brooding over your dreams. And he's forcing them to come into form, into shape, 
into purpose, into destiny. And then when it starts to take shape, God starts to speak and starts to organize around the shaping, around the making of it. And it is started off by the Spirit of God. Before God does anything, he sends the Spirit first. Before God does anything, he sends the Spirit first. Acts chapter number 2, while you all are in the upper room, don't move until I send the Spirit first. Don't go anywhere till I send the Spirit first. And have you ever felt like something was wrong even though it wasn't wrong and then you realize it was wrong? It may have been the Spirit singing a song to you, letting you know that trouble is on the way. You do know doves were also used to alert that war is coming. There are times where you are not aware that you are entering into a season of warfare and the dove on the inside of you begins to sing, begins to speak, begins to declare, begins to make you at ease, begins to wake you up early, begins to make you restless, begins to give you a desire for God because even though you don't desire God, the dove is on the inside of you and it will push you into the purpose and into the place that he has destined for you. Number two, interestingly about a dove, it's not just that. A dove is interesting because why would God use a dove as a symbol of his spirit? Because he knew, already knew the potential of the dove. But here it is. There is a uniqueness about a dove that it has an excellent knack at no matter what environment you place it in, a dove can adapt and adjust. That's why if you have children that are not by you, that we add to our prayer, Lord, send your spirit with our kids. Because even though they may be in the wrong or may be doing wrong, the spirit knows how to adapt. It knows how to adjust and knows how to bring them home. And a lot of our prayers would be more effective and efficient if we would say, Holy Spirit, I need you not just to lead me, but to sit on my life. Produce in my life what resolutions will never produce. Produce in my life the thing that you saw me doing in eternity. Because when the spirit sits over the troubled water, it doesn't see troubled water, it sees itself. It sees the capacity of the world to be what it is. We saw, verse number two, that the earth was void and formless, but the spirit saw the light. It saw the firmament beneath the firmament. It saw darkness separated. It saw the trees being in position. And the spirit will sit over our lives until our formless lives become what he always saw. Here it is. We find this. The dove is white and it symbolizes its purity and its innocence. But interestingly enough, we oftentimes pray in times of grief that the Holy Spirit would comfort you. And I always would wrestle with the understanding on why do we gravitate towards the spirit of the Holy Spirit being our comforter and our guide because it is interesting to note when Prince wrote the song, When Doves Cry, interestingly, doves do not necessarily cry. But there had to be some artistic meaning to him writing when doves cry, and as I begin to think about why would God call a spirit that reflects his Holy Spirit to be a, a type mascot or a type icon, I then begin to realize that when doves get together and they want their partner, it sounds like torment to the human ear. And to the human ear, it sounds like torture, the sound that the dove makes. That's why you obviously, and interestingly enough, will see a lot of times, 
At funerals, you'll see doves being released and being sent off. It's a sign of comfort. It's a sign. It's many different signs. And as you understand the signs that we're releasing a dove to go back to where it came from, we're in essence saying that we're giving this dove permission to go back to its creator. So we're not just sending a dove off at the graveside because it's cool. We're sending the dove off to say, go rest where you came from. And when a believer's soul is with God, when the dove goes off, it is just an actualization of what has already taken place. The dove has already made a departure into the very presence of God. The dove is just symbolically representing where the spirit had already journeyed off to. Here it is. The turtle dove, when it begins to cry to the human ear, it sounds like a cry of desperation. But to another dove, it's a cry desiring its partner. And maybe when you worship God and you did not plan to have tears come from your eyes, it may be your own prayer to God to say to God, I need my help. The Spirit is the most controversial Godhead in the Trinity. It is the most misunderstood. But if you understood the power of the Spirit, you would pray by the Spirit. Lord, send me where you want me to be. Show me where there's dry ground. I don't have to go for me to know. I will send you and you will let me know. Warn me of things that I cannot see because my eyes have not seen it, but you went ahead of me. Maybe it is the spirit that told you to take a different route from work and you're fighting with it saying, why? because it's already been where you have not seen. It already knows what you do not know. Maybe it is the Spirit of God wrestling within you to let you know I see something that you don't see. I feel something that you don't feel. I understand what you don't understand. And the Spirit of God others. And maybe God has sent the dove to find you but you keep moving from where you're supposed to be and if you're here and you've walked away from God this morning may be God calling you back to the base all heads bowed, eyes closed. Pastor, I am here. And I feel, I feel this dove calling me back to himself. It's not a matter of salvation. It's a matter of restoration. And I'm praying in 30 seconds. But before I pray, I want to invite you to come back to the base. Pastor, that's me. I sense, I sense that God is calling me to himself. It's not a call of salvation, but it's a call that you know because the deep is calling on the deep. It is a stirring in your heart that as you're hearing the word of God, God calling you back to himself. 30 seconds, I'm calling you forward. Pastor, that's me. I want you to come. I'm, I'm sensing the spirit of God calling me to himself. 15 seconds. Pastor, that's me. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. 
it's sitting on my life because there's a purpose it's sitting on my soul I feel it brooding over my life over my spirit over my mind it's been heavy on me. Yeah. It's been heavy on me. I don't know what it is, but I now know it's the Spirit of God brooding over my life, sitting over my life, calling me forward. No matter how far I went, no matter how dark of the place I've been, he's been brooding over my life, calling me forward, calling me forward, calling me forward, calling me forward, calling me forward. Man of God, the Spirit of God has been calling you forward. Seconds, man of God, I'm waiting on you. 